This short presentation describes the collaboration and community engagement around a concerning environmental issue. I preface it by saying that I'm not a scientist or a biologist and I'm not an expert on the topic I'm going to tell you about. I am, though, concerned about our world and feel that we all have a responsibility to learn, share and strive to raise awareness about environmental issues in the hope that positive action will be taken. We've all heard about the concerns around the massive death and dying of coral reefs around the world due to climate change and pollution. Coral reef ecosystems are intricate and diverse collections of species that interact with each other and their physical environment. Coral is a class of colonial animal that is related to hydroids, jellyfish and sea anemones. Stony corals, which are types of coral characterized by their hard skeleton, are the bedrock of the reef and are composed of hundreds of thousands of individual living polyps. Polyps are capable of drawing dissolved calcium from seawater and solidifying it into the hard mineral structure of calcium carbonate that serves as their skeletal support. When you look at a colony of coral, only the thin layer on the surface is live coral. The mass beneath is the calcium carbonate skeleton that may be decades old. Corals can be found throughout the world's oceans in both shallow and deep water. However, the reef building corals that rely on a symbiotic relationship with algae need shallow, clear water, allowing light penetration for photosynthesis. Stony corals also require tropical or subtropical temperatures, which exist in a band 30 degrees north to 30 degrees south of the equator. Cold water corals, also known as deep water corals, are found in deeper, darker parts of the ocean, ranging from near the surface to more than 2,000 metres deep, where water temperatures may be as cold as 4 degrees centigrade. They are slow-growing corals and they consume plankton to survive. While there are nearly as many species of deep water corals as shallow water species, only a few deep water species develop traditional reefs. Cold water coral is found in the Canadian coastal and offshore waters of the Pacific, Atlantic and Arctic Oceans as well in the, as in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Coral reefs are some of the most diverse and valuable ecosystems on Earth. Coral reefs support thousands of species of fish, more species per unit area than any other marine environment. Scientists estimate that there may be millions of undiscovered species of organisms living in and around reefs. This biodiversity is considered key to finding new medicines for the 21st century. Many drugs are now being developed from coral reef animals and plants as possible cures for cancer, arthritis, human bacterial infections, viruses and other diseases. Healthy coral reefs support commercial and subsistence fisheries, as well as jobs and business businesses through tourism and recreation. Fisheries depend on coral reefs and related habitats for part of the fish life cycles. Coral reef structures also buffer shorelines against the energy from waves, storms and floods, helping to prevent loss of life, property damage and erosion. Under stressful conditions such as temperature increases, overexposure to sunlight and pollution, coral expels the symbiotic algae living within its tissues, causing it to turn completely white. Although coral can survive bleaching events, continued stress causes coral death. This is what drove science writer Margaret Wertheim and artist Christine Wertheim twin sisters from Australia, to create the Crochet Coral Reef project in 2005. They realised that crochet has an amazing ability to mimic the mathematical unique forms of reefs while bringing crafting and science education together. The amazing Crochet Coral Reef Travelling Exhibition has been presented around the world, including the Ontario Science Centre and has inspired community activism, environmental awareness and math and science learning. 
The trifling exhibit has inspired local groups to build their own crochet satellite reefs. More than 20,000 people in more than 40 communities have crocheted satellite reefs around the world. The Ontario Science Centre joined this network of satellite reefs and sought contributions to their province-wide community art project to help them create a colourful coral reef made entirely from crochet. I digress a little at this point to bring in the collaboration component of this project. I volunteer at Windreach Farm, which is a 105-acre working farm near Ashburn, north of Whitby, which is accessible to people with disabilities, allowing them to engage in farm activities and to enjoy nature. The farm has a full spectrum of farm animals and runs a range of programs for all ages, encouraging participation, hands-on activities and skills training. I am the lead volunteer for the Wool Programme, which engages participants in processing the wool from our flock of about 25 sheep, from shearing to the finished product. When the call came to assist the Ontario Science Centre in, create, in creating a satellite crochet coral reef, I contacted them to suggest a group effort from Windreach Farm, and they were delighted to accept our offer. We used our sheep wool, washed, teased, carded, hand dyed and hand spun. We then called on participants, staff, volunteers, students and visitors to share in our creations. Skill levels varied greatly but even the ability to join in with a few stitches was welcomed. Manipulating a crochet hook isn't easy but using the fingers to make a chain is quite simple and the chains were incorporated into the pieces. The Science Centre called for five different presentations of coral, so we worked to produce reefs to ma match this request. Tropical reefs rely on sunlight to produce food and present with vibrant colours. Cold water coral displays more muted colours. The stressed bleached coral expe expels the symbiotic algae living within its tissues, causing it to turn through greys and light brown to completely white. Millions of tons of plastic waste, which contain harmful microorganisms, enter our oceans every year. This plastic waste also blocks sunlight from reaching the coral, which can cause coral death. A reef made of plastic materials symbolizes the damage caused by pollution. On a more positive note, around the world, scientists and activists are working on many ways to restore and protect coral reefs including laboratory-grown coral transplanted into the ocean to grow on sunken man-made objects. Once completed, the individual pieces of crochet coral were built onto bases to be displayed. You may have noticed that we included a flavour of the farm in our reefs by introducing some farm-related items in the structure, including a pitchfork, a baby chick feeder and a horseshoe, among others. Over 60 farm folk shared in the creation of our five completed coral reefs, which were on display at the farm, before heading off to the Science Centre to be part of the Community Satellite Crochet Coral Reef. It was a learning experience for many people, not only about the plight of coral reefs, but also an introduction to the pleasures of crocheting and promoting the many benefits of sheep wool. Hopefully spreading the word one person at a time can and will make a difference.